Isaiah 41 says, do not be afraid for I am with you. Do not be dismayed for I am your God. I will strengthen you and I will help you. I will uphold you with my righteous right hand. He is with you no matter what you go through. Psalms 34, 4 says, I prayed to the Lord and he answered me. He freed me from all my fears. I pray for those of you who are going through scary situations right now, that you will begin to cast every single one of your doubts and fears and all the lies you've been believing. I pray that you cast them all back onto Yara and you just tell him everything and you pour it out at his feet and watch as he takes it and he carries it and he takes it off of you and gives you a peace from the Holy Spirit. He gives you a strength and a boldness and an understanding where you'll focus so on him and on his kingdom that you see how it's worth it it may be hard and it may not feel good it might feel uncomfortable it might be scary it might be everything your flesh doesn't want you to do but it's worth it and you understand it and you begin to want it that the desires of your heart begin to be aligned with the desires of his heart and you understand that our time on earth is only short so any trial and tribulation you face here isn't worth giving up all of your eternity Lord, we know that you will stand by your righteous people, that you will not forsake us nor leave us. Your word tells us in Psalms 55 to cast all of our cares onto you and you will sustain us through it all, that you will never let the righteous fall, that you will never forsake your righteous people, you will never leave them, that when we stick by you, you stick by us. And I pray that we will just choose to focus on what really matters instead of being deceived and distracted, that we will focus our eyes back onto you, yeah. But when you focus on the wrong thing, that's when fear sets in. That's why the Bible says that we don't live by sight, we live by faith. I pray that they will fix their eyes on the one that stands with them rather than all the trials that the enemy tries to throw at them. The enemy tries to shift our focus onto the wrong things so that we get scared and full of fear, so that we focus on all of the attacks and that we came in and get scared and I pray that instead that we will just keep our eyes focused on you and as we focus on you we feel this peace and we can stand firm on your word and on who you are and that we will not be shaken by the ways of this world, we will not be shaken by the attacks and the trials the enemy throws at us, that we will not be shaken by the temptations the enemy throws at us, that we will stand firm on your word and that we will live how you called us to live. I pray that we will not fear the enemy's attacks. Though it may be hard and there will be trials and tribulations, I pray that we will not be people who fear the enemy's attacks and that we know that his time is short and he knows his time is short too. And because he knows his time is short, he is trying everything possible to distract and deceive God's people so that we get dragged to hell with him. And I pray that you give us the wisdom and the guidance and the strength to stand firm even when it's scary. And even when it's easy to cave in, I pray that we will fix our eyes on your word and what you're saying is happening in these times and what you call us to do. And I pray that we will just have that eternal perspective. Christ's strength will triumph over every fear. When you choose to step into the strength of the Holy Spirit and focus on him, you cannot have one foot in the world and one foot in Christ. You can't be half a Christian. You can't just expect to be strong in your faith if you have one foot in the world. You can't expect to have the peace of the Holy Spirit that transcends all understanding if you're refusing to hand over all of your fears to him and all of your ways to him. Your whole life must be submitted to him and that is where you will draw from him, his strength and his peace and his joy and every single fruit of the spirit that he has to offer to you. Once you choose to live in alignment with God's word, that's when you receive these things. But so often we try and do things our own way and we get scared and we try and listen to man and we try and just work things out ourselves and we drift from the word. And I pray that instead that you will stand firm on his word, that you will trust in him, that he will uphold his righteous people. And I pray that you choose to live holy and for him that you will not look at everyone else in the world and that you will not be swayed by what you're seeing in the world. I pray that instead that you will choose to be set apart and to focus on him. Even when your whole family and your job and your life is threatened, I pray that no matter what trial or temptation the enemy tries to set before you and throw before you, I pray that you choose to stand firm and have the faith to believe in Christ, that he will and he can save you and hold you up. If you are fearful right now, that is not from God. God is not giving you a spirit of fear that is straight from the enemy. 
if you are reading God's word and you're hearing about scary things and I pray that you know that any fear that is created from that is not being sent from God that God promises to protect you to be with you that does not mean that you will be free from trials but it means that he will be with you and that he will stand by you and he tells you to trust in him not to worry but to trust to put all of your fears and lay them at his feet and allow him to take them because he can carry that burden so I pray that you stop allowing the enemy to have a foothold on your mind. I pray that you stop allowing the enemy to dictate the, de the decisions that you make because you're being led by fear. You're being led by what man says, by the fear in man telling you that you need to do this and you need to do that. I pray that instead you choose to have the faith to just trust in your saviour, to trust that he will be faithful like he has every other time in your life how quickly we are to forget the faithfulness of God when he has proved himself faithful to us time and time again in our life. When you look back over all the years that you've been alive, every single time that he's proved himself faithful, I pray that you will remind yourself in times of fear. When the enemy tries to put his lies in your head to try and sway you from sticking with God, I pray that you choose to remind yourself, that you tell your, you tell your mind, that you remind yourself of who God is and how he's proved himself to you, that you remind yourself of the word of God and what it says and instead of dwelling on the fear that the enemy tries to set before you and tries to put in your mind I pray that you choose to switch your focus onto the things of God if you have enough time to worry so much about something I pray that you choose to turn that worry into prayer and you choose to just pray whether you feel like it or not that you just say I'm going to pray right now I'm going to set all of these fears and worries before his feet I'm going to get in the word I'm going to allow God to take control of this instead of allowing the enemy to keep on speaking and getting in your head and feeding fear to you that is why Christ tells us in Psalms 23 that though I walk through the shadow of the darkest valley he prepares a table before me in the presence of my enemies. He says that to us to say, focus on me. In the presence of your enemies, choose to put your focus on me. Because when you focus on them, you begin, you begin to allow your life to be dictated by how you're feeling because of your enemies. When you focus on me, that you begin to draw from my strength, you draw from my peace. It doesn't matter what's going on around you as long as you believe and you know that I'm right here with you, sitting at the table I've prepared for you. I pray you shut out the things of the world and you choose to focus on what really matters. I pray you stop choosing death over life, that you stop choosing sin over your saviour, that you stop choosing fear over the strength of God. Because ultimately it is your choice. So much we, we can say that, oh, we were put in really hard circumstances and we had no choice. But actually at the end of the day, it's still your choice what you do, whether it's hard, whether the, whether the enemy, whether the enemy makes it hard for you to make the right decision or not you still have the choice to choose God and I pray that every single time you do because when has ever listening to the enemy's lies and the enemy's fear ever got you anywhere in life but to destruction to a path of destruction you know great men and women of God do not just happen overnight but it happens out of a product of your decisions your daily decisions every single day the little decisions you make they add up when you choose, I'm going to read the word instead of doing this. I'm going to pray when I feel fearful instead of giving in to the enemy's lies. I'm going to choose not to live like them and I'm going to live like this. All these little decisions that you make where the enemy will try and lie to you and say it's not that big of a deal and it doesn't matter. No, you need to, turn, you need to know it is because you're training yourself to either listen to God and be a strong believer or to just be like the rest of the world and to just be living by your fears and your emotions and be living by the moment. If you want to be close to God and you want to be strong, it's not always going to be an easy journey. But it's all the little decisions you make, they add up. Saying yes to the right things and no to the wrong things. Stop being so willing to listen to the enemy's lies and deception when you know that all he wants for you is destruction and to take you away from what's truly best for you. How stupid we can be to allow ourselves to be fooled and deceived by the enemy so easily when deep down we know that he just wants what's worse for us and what God wants is what's best for us. And we blame God when things go wrong in our life as if he's not just trying to protect us and help us. The enemy 
is the father of lies and he'll come to you wrapped up in a pretty bow looking like there's nothing wrong going on to try and deceive you and take you away from God's word. This is why we need to be alert and put on the full armour of God daily because when we don't do that, when we become apathetic, that's when we become vulnerable to the enemy's schemes. Sin starts when we become apathetic in our faith. We start to drift from God when we allow ourselves to become apathetic from speaking to him and reading his word. When we allow ourselves to become apathetic, that's where the enemy seeps in because he sees that vulnerability where we're becoming more and more like the flesh instead of more and more like God daily. These little decisions you make, they add up because you're putting yourself in a place of vulnerability to the enemy's attacks rather than standing firm, putting on the full armor of God every single day to stand firm against the enemy. Do not lean on your own understanding, but choose to instead trust in God's. He sees the overall big picture and you can't. You only see what you're looking at presently. Don't just listen to your feelings because your feelings will fluctuate and they'll tell you lies. They'll tell you one thing now that's not true. It's not the truth. The truth is God's word. So choose to see things through his perspective. He sees the whole picture. So when he tells you something, trust him. And I believe that when our time is up on this earth, we will all hear either one of two sentences from God. We'll either hear, well done, good and faithful servant, or depart from me for I never knew you. And I pray that you hear, well done, and good and faithful servant. And I believe that not only will he say this to us, but he'll show us who we had the potential to become. He'll show us who we were created to be. And I pray that you get the good outcome from that. I pray that you see this person, and when you meet them, that you will just like that. I pray that you stepped into the purpose that God created you for rather than having the bad outcome which is meeting them and not even recognizing them having no similarities just not fully having stepped into the purpose that Christ created you for whilst you had the time the precious time gifted to you here on earth I pray that you will not waste away your life here when this time is so precious when this life he has gifted you is so precious and I pray that when your life comes to an end and you meet God that you will be that person he created you to be instead of looking back in regret and saying I wish that I cared enough about my eternity to focus on it more than on the momentary things of this life and I pray in closing that you listen to these words read from Psalms 91 and that you receive the peace from the words that your God is speaking to you right now through the situations you're going through. He reads, He who dwells in the shelter of the Most High will rest in the shadow of the Almighty. I will say of the Lord, He is my refuge and my fortress, my God in whom I trust. He will cover you with his feathers and under his wings you will find refuge. His faithfulness will be your shield and your rampart. You will not fear the terror of night, nor the arrow that flies by day, nor the pestilence that stalks in the darkness, nor the plague that destroys at midday. A thousand may fall at your side, ten thousand at your right hand, but it will not come near you. For he will command his angels concerning you, to guard you in all your ways, because he loves me says the Lord I will rescue him I will protect him for he acknowledges my name he will call upon me and I will answer him I will be with him in trouble I will deliver him and I will honor him these are the words that God is speaking to you right now when you focus on him when you're faithful to him when you live for him when you repent of your sins and you choose to turn towards him no matter your past and what you've done when you choose repentance you are washed clean by him and I pray that you do that. I pray that you choose to focus on him and receive these words right now that he is speaking over you. I pray that you allow him to be Lord of your life. I pray that you stop idolizing all these things of the world and that you give him the rightful number one place in your life as your creator that he deserves. And when you do that, you step into this true freedom, this true freedom known in Christ, what you were created for that feels like nothing else and that no matter how hard life can get you know you have a hope beyond this life that you have a hope beyond whatever man tries to throw at you